when it comes to success, to me there's four distinct areas where we have to, we have to achieve mastery. The first is strategic planning. The second is personal branding. The third is networking. And the fourth is maintaining contact with dynamic centers of influence. Let me take a few moments and talk about each. First, you have to begin with a plan, right? Look, we're going to get there. The question is, is there where we want to go or there's where we're going to end up? Sometimes when I start to do goal setting with people, I'll get, you know, the naysayers and they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm not really into this or, you know, these, all these different worksheets. And I think to myself, how could you possibly think you're serious about your career without a written strategic plan? You know, I have a client of mine and a very successful commercial insurance brokerage firm and they just took on a capital partner. And so the capital partner invested tens of millions of dollars in the company. And they get together once a quarter to update them on the progress of the company. And when they come together, the capital partner starts by pulling out the goals and going over the goals they set for themselves. Now, if somebody who is investing tens of millions of dollars says that goals are good, I think I'm probably going to follow them. What I find is when most people don't want to set goals, it's because they're lazy. So you have to have a written set of goals. Now, what, what should the goals be? What should the format be? For me, I have annual, I have quarterly, I have monthly, I have weekly, and I have daily. And again, sounds like a lot, right? Not really. At the beginning of the year, I sit down and I spend an hour, maybe two, focusing on what do I want my big, hairy, audacious goals to be for this coming year. And then what I do at the same time is I set my first quarter goals. And then I set my first month's goals. Now going forward, I don't have to set my annual goals anymore because they've already been set. So quarterly, four times a year, I set quarterly goals. Twelve times a year, I set monthly goals. And then what I do is I prepare weekly goals, usually the Friday before the coming week, Saturday or Sunday so I hit the ground running on Monday and then the night before the next day at work I take a quick look at my weekly goals and I see which ones are the priorities to get done tomorrow. I will tell you this up until I was 35 years old I was more of an enigma than anything to people because I had a lot of potential I graduated from Georgetown Law School you know I was a, a good uh, conversationalist I had a good personality I was fairly bright but I was really mediocre. And when I was 35 years old, for whatever reason, it's all started to click for me. And I began to set written goals. And I will tell you, from 35 to 40, I achieved more than I did my first 35 years. The second quarter is your personal brand. Look, my next door neighbor, Dick Mercer, said to me one time, it was a great line, he said, Timmy, nobody is a successful person unless an awful lot of people want that person to be. You will not be successful unless you have a great personal brand because you need a lot of raving fans to make you successful. So you got to build a great personal brand. It starts with selecting the right brand and spending the rest of your life intentionally promoting that brand to your target audience. That means managing everything you do or don't do, everything you say or you don't say. Literally millions of big and little actions will make up your personal brand over the course of your life. The third category is networking. I look at it from this perspective. Your goal is to build a network of superstars. You want people who are above you to reach down and pull you up. Well, they're not going to pull you up if they don't think that you're worthy of being pulled up, which means you've got to add value to them. You've got to have a great, compelling personal brand. Think of your network like this. You do not want to be the best person in your network. You want to be like real estate, the poorest house on the richest block, because it means you have the the biggest jump potential of everybody. You know, I remember being part of an organization and uh, it was a political organization and I was very clear early on I did not have the financial resources everybody else did and I wanted people to know that. Now I was willing to contribute in other ways because I wanted to stay in the room. I knew these really successful people could take me and my game to the next level. So I had to offer them additional value because I couldn't stroke a check the way they could stroke a check. Well, I added that additional value and I got to spend time with these incredibly successful people which benefited me immeasurably. The last piece of the puzzle is, is maintaining contact with key centers of influence. The whole idea is to build relationships with people and then cultivate those relationships. Go narrow and deep. 
You know, I have this box system, which is incredible. I've made over $10 million using it. And it's the identification of the top 30 people in my network and the strategies I use to maintain contact with these people. The average person needs to hear your message six to eight times to remember you. Think about that. So are you touching people six to eight times a year? Now look, this is really important, at least for me. My attitude is, I don't mind maintaining contact with you, as long as I'm not begging you to be friends. But I'm okay if that's my skill, if I've set it up and it's easier for me, and I'm maintaining contact with other superstars, and we're going to lunch, or we're going to dinner, or we're going to events together, and afterward they're saying, boy, that's great, we gotta do this more often. Why would I care if I'm the person that coordinates that? As long as somebody is not using me or I don't feel like I'm begging you to be my friend, if that's my skill, I made the decision long ago that I was going to drive the relationships because up to 35 years old, I was in an average network at best. I was one of the best in my network and by the way, it wasn't particularly impressive. Now, when you achieve mastery in those four areas, you don't have to worry about business because you will have created such pull. Your reputation will precede you. People who are super successful will gravitate towards you for your products and services and for your judgment. So when I'm working with my clients, first thing is, what's our plan? Next, what's our brand? Next, what does our network look like? How are we going to build it and add more superstars? And lastly, what are we doing to cultivate relationships with these people to go narrow and deep? And by the way, you set it up in one year, and then year after year after year, you're, you are achieving more and more mastery in each of those four areas. You're setting new goals. You're doing additional things to build a great personal brand. You're, you're meeting and, and great new people to bring into your network, and you're, you're coming up with additional ideas to go narrow and deep with these people, and it never ends. You put this in place, you're not gonna have to worry about making cold calls. You're not gonna have to worry about, can I make it through the lean times if the economy goes into a recession? But to do this, you gotta be willing to think strategically. So your four areas of mastery, build a strategic plan, build a great personal brand, build an amazing network, and maintain contact better than everybody else in the marketplace, and the rest will take care of itself.